How do I get tight, crispy, punchy background vocals on my pop and R&B tracks? That's a great question. Let's talk about it. Hey, what's up everybody? It's your boy Anthony coming back at you with AJ Audio and Production and welcome to my home studio and my YouTube channel. So I got a good question from somebody. They asked, how do I get tight and punchy background vocals on my pop and R&B tracks? Let's just hop into the session right now and just talk about these background vocals and uh, how we're able to get that really tight, really crisp sound that we hear so much in our favorite pop songs that are on the radio. And uh, let's see what we get. All right, so let's check it out. Uh, right here, what I have is a song, uh, a cover song that I did with my two daughters, Nikki and Trinity. Uh, Trinity was age nine at the time, and Nikki was uh, 14 at the time that we recorded this. Um, it's John Bellion, All Time Low. A lot of parents that have their kids do summer projects and things of that nature. What I do is have my kids come into the studio and record with me. Um, my kids can actually uh, sing pretty good, so I like to allow them an opportunity to just express themselves artistically every now and again, come in, record, and if it's something they'd like to do in the future, then so be it, whatever. Um, first thing I'm going to show you guys is with this just being a for fun session, you can implement these uh, quote unquote rules or laws that I use within this session uh, for your actual mix down sessions. What you're going to find out is these are my background vocal tracks. And as you'll see, the only thing I have on my background vocal tracks is auto tune. Like I said, this song was for fun, so I'm not trying to perfect anything and get in here and make sure that all the notes are right on top of each other. We literally recorded this song within an hour and a half. So these are all my background vocal tracks here. And what you'll notice is all of my background vocal tracks are feeding into one ox and that's all we're going to be using today to eq and tune so let's just pick up right here uh going into the chorus see what we got la, 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 I try to hide, but now you know it then i'm at an all time low 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 All right, so let me play that without the lead vocal here. Let me mute that. And again, all the processing that you're hearing is happening right here. And we're going to break this down in what I'm doing. Uh, let me play that again. Just right on top of it. No music. All right, the first thing you want to do when recording your background vocals and wanting to make sure that they're tight and punchy, this is like a must. I'll actually go up here to this little part to show this little trick to you. So this is a ad lib on a lead vocal or a stack on a lead vocal. So if I play this. Was a night in shining armor in your movie. This is the easiest thing you can do to make sure that your um that your uh your tracks are lining up properly. Let me play that again. Was a night in shining armor in your movie. First thing you want to do is while you're recording, you want to make sure that all of your background vocals are panned center. Okay? Whenever I record background vocals, I never pan the vocals until after all of my backgrounds for that section are panned. I'm sorry, are, are uh, set to center. Then I'll start recording. Um, after we're done recording, I'll start widening them out. And then when we get to another part of the song, we're going to add background vocals. I'll go back in and set all of my pan knobs to center again. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow you to hear... If any one of your vocals are not matching up properly time-wise, that's really important. I'm trying to get everything to line up time-wise. If you don't, make sure that they're pan center and you're panning them hard left or right while you're recording. You'll never get that time alignment um, 
done properly. So let me just play the lead vocal that I'm following. My lead vocal is the is the uh, the guide track. So let me play that. Was a night in shining armor in your movie. Right. Then I'll add one of these vocals. Was a night in shining armor in your movie. What? And what you'll hear is, <clears throat> as I play it, the vocals kind of disappear in the background, which is what's supposed to happen. So let me play the second one. This is all three tracks. Was a night in shining armor in your movie. So if you're recording and you start hearing the vocals disappear in the background, that means that you're lining it up properly and that your timing is on point. You can't have tight, punchy background vocals if your timing is everywhere because you'll start hearing from all of your siblings whenever you use P's, S, or T's. They're not going to line up properly. So you want to make sure that those line up and that your timing is proper. Once I pan these hard left and right and play it again, you'll hear that width that comes in with just this little vocal stack. Was a night in shining armor in your movie. One more time. Was a night in shining armor in your movie. So that's it. Uh, now that same concept goes for here on this uh, part right here. Put your lips. Put your lips on mine and love the aftertaste now. Put okay. Um, same concept here when when the harmonies get a little more complex. Uh, Trinity's doing this woo 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 thing down here. So I'll play that. And even if I come in here, this is Trinity's verse. She's nine again. Um, so if I play her verse, uh, let me bring her back in. You're the reason that I just can't concentrate. Oh, I've been trying to fix my pride, but that thing's broken. And right there, I'll show you. I've been trying to fix my pride, but that thing's broken. If I solo these two right here. I've been trying to fix my pride, but that thing's broken. And I set these to center. I've been trying to fix my pride, but that thing's broken. That's what you're looking for right there. That's that's where I'd say 80% of the magic and your pop and R&B background vocals comes from is just making sure that everything's time aligned properly. Um, I do love to get into intricate harmonies, as um, you'll hear here on Nikki's verse when she comes in. Hey, I've been trying to fix my pride, but that thing's broken. And then right here. Now, of course, that's just with however you range vocals. I'm a, I do vocal arrangement as well, and I just love um, intricate harmonies, especially on this part when we get to the bridge. This is all vocals. Now let's get into the magic of this because I know a lot of you are looking and going, how is he taking all of these background vocal tracks and literally not processing them at all on the channels and we're only running through here? So let's break down this whole channel strip right quick. So no, re no reverb, no delay, no reverb to none of that. So just straight up dry. So what's happening right there is all of these tracks are summing into this track. So this is an easy way to uh, record and mix with broad strokes. And then when you go into the actual mixing process, you can separate things and go in with more intricate details, or you could just leave it like this. If it sounds good, leave it, man. So the first thing that's on here is I have Q8, which is one of my favorite EQs. 
This is made by Waves. And I'm not doing much of nothing on this thing. I'm just rolling off the bottom. And I pull just a little bit of 1K out of there. Because what you'll find is with all these tracks summing together, you're going to have frequency build up, which is why it sounds so warm right now. All that low mids and all that stuff is just kind of building up, just stacking on top of each other. So then next in line, I have my virtual mix rack, which is by uh, Slate. And I love the virtual mix rack. Let me just mute all of these so that we can go through and hear what each one is adding. So inside this mix rack, it's almost not even fair because as you see, I'm using one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's like using seven plugins in one is what's happening right now. One plugin, but seven plugins, or uh, this is, consider this a studio chain or, or a channel strip. So imagine each one of these just coming one after the other, one on top of the other down a channel strip. That's what I'm doing here. So the first thing up is the virtual channel, which just is just going to give me a little uh, saturation to this. So let me play it. That's all that's doing right there. Really subtle. It's just making sure that I keep that warmth in there. Next up, I have the EQ right here. This is kind of, uh, this is emulating, I believe it's a SSL EQ. Um, play that one. I'm just adding a little bit of the high end. Looks like right around in that 7, 8K. Uh, just to get that brightness out of it. That's all I'm doing with this one. Yeah, that just adds a little top end to it. <clears throat> Next up, it's another EQ. Uh, this is more like a Neve EQ. And on this one, I'm just coming in around 3.2, and I'm boosting that up a little bit. Let's hear that. Without it. And with it. So there immediately you start hearing things cut through. Um, next up, I have the FG Stressor. I love this compressor. It is so dope. I put... I put this stuff on everything <laughs> whenever I use the um, the virtual mix rack plug-in. This is always somewhere in my chain. Uh, so this is going to just take that. It's going to glue everything together. I like to call this my glue. Uh, so everything I've done here and everything that's here previous, it's just going to glue all that stuff together for me. So listen to it. Without it. And with it. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but like as soon as you put that in, it just tightens it up. So let me play it again without it. And with it. It's just glue. That's all it is. It's, it just glues it together. I love it. Uh, the next one that I have here is Revival. Revival is going to add that high, that top end, that that shimmer to it. I love this plugin as well. I put this on everything too. These two guys right here, Slate, you are a genius for these. So let me play that for you without it. And with it. And I'm sure you can hear that that shimmer that was just added in there. So next up, I have Earth. And what this is going to do is just going to add some of those low mids into that vocal because I wanted the chorus and those oohs to be, I wanted it to have warmth and presence. So I'll play without it. And with it. This one is very subtle. You'll hear this more once I start adding my compression after this. Um, and then I have a trimmer. 
And what this does is just make sure that nothing that I push through these things goes over zero dB. And with it. And again, it's just making sure that nothing goes over that zero dB point. I don't want this clipping anything. That's all it does. All right, so now let's start adding the magic. Things are sounding good. And I go to Arvox. This is going to do nothing but give me instant gratification with volume. So um, Arvox is a waves compressor. You basically turn it on, bring your compression ratio down, and it automatically compresses it and makes it sound amazing. That's the best way I can explain this. So without it, and with it and you see how everything just jumped out there and popped out for you now here's the thing with Arvox once you put this on there and it compresses and boosts everything for you you're going to have a lot of build up within certain frequency ranges so what I found was I was having some build up around that 2, 3k area because, uh, of course, we did some boosting of those frequencies in here. And then once we compressed it with our Vox, it became a little too harsh for me. You hear it on that uo? I didn't want that sticking out so much. But I didn't want to cut that, so I didn't go in with another EQ to cut it. What I did is I went in with a multiband compressor, and I bypassed everything except for what I wanted to just compress not cut i'm not getting rid of these frequencies i'm just bringing the volume down on them whenever they get too loud so i'll play that now with this uh without it and with it and you can hear you hear how it made it a little more smooth when she goes to that ooh oh part uh, so that's all this is for. It's a multiband compressor, the C4 that I'm only using for this little little area right here. Now this is where all of the magic comes in. Vitamin, this is a plugin that a lot of people don't know about that they have in their Waves um, catalog. Um, I have the Waves Silver Bundle, and this comes with the Waves Silver Bundle. Um, Vitamin is going to add that extra air and space to just a stereo vocal and that's all it does it allows you to add width um to your background vocals or instruments um if you look here it's all kinds of presets for vocals and drums if you're ever trying to figure out how to widen something uh or widen a vocal and you're confused on exactly how to do it this is the way to go use this plug in you'll be amazed so this is without it and now what i do here is i take all of my air frequencies up here in that nine thousand um nine thousand and up i'm taking that and i'm spreading that all the way left and right so you'll hear the width start coming in there um that high mid range that 2500 i'm taking that and i'm putting that about 75 percent turning it up a little bit so you'll hear that width come in check it out without it and with it instant gratification and right here i'm just finishing that chain off with a de-esser um probably can't hear much of that de-esser on here um because they're not saying any s's or t's but i played it anyway <laughs> and just that right there alone sounds great if i bring the track back in and play it with the track
that's with no um, effects. And then once I add those in, I use my effects only to create space for the background vocals and mix to taste. That's another video, we'll talk about effects. But just add those in. All right, so that's about where I'm going to end this video here. I really hope that this helps somebody out there. Um, if you like this video, make sure you click that thumbs up button. Helps other people uh, get a chance to see this video. Also, click subscribe and click that notification bell icon to the left or the right of it. Uh, so you can be notified every time I release a video every week, every Monday, right here on this channel. And again, thank you guys so much for the love. This has been an amazing journey. I'm enjoying uploading these videos every Monday. And hopefully today you guys have learned how to take <laughs> one million background vocals and bust them down into one channel and make them sound great. Hope this helps somebody. I will see you guys next week on Monday. Thank you for tuning in. Peace. You're the reason that I just can't concentrate. I've been trying to fix my pride, but that thing's broken. That thing's broken